Hi, I'm John Verparian, and this is a special sports edition of Beyond the Game. Tonight, what if you could hold in your hand the franchise? Indeed, my guest is a player representative. He handles football contracts left and right for a number of players in the NFL, and indeed, he's got a handful of players of franchise quality. Indeed, it is a pleasure to have Eugene T. Lee here to talk about player representation. So without further ado, Eugene, welcome to uh, Beyond the Game. Thanks, John. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> it's, um, I'm just curious, let's, let's get right to the chase. Mm -hmm. uh, your background is having been at uh, Notre Dame undergrad, right. Notre Dame Law School, you're an attorney, mm -hmm. and now you've taken a sort of a left turn, so to speak, from the law to player representation. Right. How did you get on the path of being a pro football agent? Well, it was a fortuitous I guess, instance where I met my first clients playing pickup basketball at Notre Dame. I became friends with some of the guys on the team. They'd come down to the rec center in the off season. We'd play pickup games. And at the time, you know, I had accepted a job offer with my first firm in the city here, mm -hmm. you know, practicing contractual law, intellectual property law. And the industry at that time had gotten a black eye. There were some agents out there doing unscrupulous things. And so my friends on the team had asked me to become certified, which I did. And, you know, I came out to New York, and I got my certification with the NFLPA, and I was practicing law with my first firm, you know, gaining great experience in contractual negotiations, more with corporate clients. Uh, but at the same point in time, I was working with my Notre Dame guys and negotiating contracts. Mm -hmm. And I was doing my first few clients that way, just Notre Dame players. Every year thereafter, for the first few years, they'd have a teammate of theirs who wasn't looking for the glitz, wasn't looking for the glam but was looking for someone to do right by them on the contract and more importantly be someone they could trust it would be there you know have their back for all matters and you know for the next few years I was represent, representing just Notre Dame players you know one every other year as I was doing this and I was still practicing law I realized two things you know number one I had an aptitude for what I was doing negotiating contracts and making sure that the language was right and the numbers were right but more importantly, the second thing I realized was that I really enjoyed the work. You know, working with young men of character to help them achieve their dreams, to achieve a common goal. So after some soul searching, and it's very difficult to walk away from like a nice salary as an associate with a big firm in the city. But, you know, following your dream is the most important thing. So after some soul searching, I decided to launch my own company full time, uh, coming up on seven years now. And, you know, it's been great. It's been a challenge to start an agency from the ground up but challenges are what life is about and you know the foundation of what we've done is building our agency with clients who not only will have that God-given ability on the field but will be young men of character and we've been very very fortunate to do that now when viewers you, your website which uh, talks about ETL Associates you go to worldwideweb.etlassociates.com uh, what would viewers find at your website they would find you know, pretty much the substance of our organization. You know, the principles of our company, uh, it's myself and two other vice presidents, uh, Dennis Boyev, who is also an attorney and an NFL certified agent, and then my vice president of player development is Dwayne Harper. He's a former all-pro cornerback, played 12 years in the NFL uh, with Seattle, San Diego, and Detroit, was a phenomenal player, was named all-pro in 91 and 95, and was actually named to the Sports Illustrated All-NFL Team of the 1990s as one of the starting corners. So what Dwayne does is he coordinates position-specific coaching for our clients when they enter the draft every year. You know, through the relationships that he's made over the past 12 years, he's able to coordinate coaching with you know, former Pro Bowl players at every position on both sides of the ball. So that's been a tremendous asset in mm -hmm. some of the connections he has. But you know, you'll learn about Dwayne's background, Dennis's background, my background. You'll learn about the services we offer, our mission statement, uh, the current clients we have in the NFL. And there are some articles that I have written on contract negotiation, you know, different benefits that you'll have as an NFL player. These are all, these all can be found on our website. We also have a Wonderlick test taking simulator, yeah. you know, that simulates the Wonderlick test you take at the combine, and also, uh, you know, a compensation calculator. So, uh, an aspiring pro football player can go to the website, plug in, you know, where he expects to be drafted, and then see exactly what he'll, what he can expect in terms of a signing bonus and base salary and for the first contract. Could you talk a little bit about mm -hmm. the Wonderlick? Why do teams employ that test? 
In a nutshell, they employ that test to determine how easy or how easily a player can pick up the playbook. You know, it's a personnel test that's not only given to NFL players, but Wonderlick gives this personnel test. You know, various companies nationwide use the test to determine. You know, it basically determine intellectual capacity, capacity to pick up the job, learn the job. You know, for a football player, it's learning the playbook, learning the offensive, you know, or defensive schemes. And you know, I tell my guys that unless you do very, very poorly on the test, or unless you do extremely, extremely well. As long as you're in the middle area, they're really it's not really gonna sway one team or another. They just wanna make sure that you're not really at the at the bottom end of the stick. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if you're in the in the very high portion, you know, they always take a step back and say, Wow, you know, he's very smart. But as long as you're testing where most of the guys do test, you know, in that in that middle range, you know, that's teams are okay with that. And it's it's a fifty multiple choice test, question mm -hmm. test, and you have twelve minutes to take it. So, you know, usually if a player scores in the 20s, you're fine. So, You mentioned that you, uh, th through word of mouth of the Fighting Irish uh, students, you're, you're, you became known as someone to go to as right. a player rep. One of your clients, I see, is the fastest man in the NFL, and he did not play Division I football. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, our player, our client is Brian Witherspoon. He's a cornerback, kick returner for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He is in his second year this year. He's from Stillman College, which is a Division II school in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And if you go to the website and you go to YouTube and you plug in his name, Brian Witherspoon, the first link that'll pop up is a video of Brian running a 41640 during pre-draft training back in 2008. And if you count the steps, it took him only 19 steps to run 40 yards. And he's not, he's not very tall or rangy. He's only about 5'10", but, you know, he was moving. And that is a phenomenally fast time, you know, 4.16. So you're, you're right. Brian came out of a Division II school. He didn't come out of a Notre Dame or a Big Ten or an SEC school. But he was gifted athletically. You know, he worked his tail off. Uh, we provided him with the support to work with Dwayne as a cornerback on mm -hmm. his technique, on his backpedal, you know, learning the game, learning the position to play at the next level. Last season as a rookie at Jacksonville, he broke the rookie all-purpose yardage record previously held by Maurice Jones-Drew based on his kickoff returns and his punt returns. And he has the franchise record, which he set last year as a rookie, for 1,250 yards in kickoff returns. Uh, he averaged 24.6 yards per return last season as a rookie and 11.3 yards per punt return. So, you know, he's doing extremely well. And, you know, we look forward to many, many years to come with with Brian down in Jacksonville. Eugene, how do you prepare yourself for the college football season? Because in essence, that's the farm uh, squad for the NFL. How do you uh, get ready yourself? What we do is, you know, in the late spring, early summer, we, you know, we gather around a table and we sit down and we discuss prospects, players whom we'd like to recruit, you know, based upon some feedback we've received from various contacts throughout the league, uh, some of our own scouting reports we come up with an initial list of recruits and again I've touched on it before mm -hmm. but you know the players are going to need to have that ability to play on Sundays mm -hmm. in terms of athleticism and football ability football skills but we look for a little bit more you know, we look for character mm -hmm. and will this young man come in be an asset to his team be an asset to the community once we come up with that initial list we then you know send out our materials brochures our DVDs you know we send the website links to the players we make initial contact with the players and their parents and then, you know, we set up meetings throughout the course of the fall. You know, following up on the initial mailings and the initial correspondence, we set up in-person meetings at various games throughout the fall. And, you know, we take it from there. And as the season ends and these, these young men are put in a position to make the final decision about representation, you know, we always feel confident, or I always feel confident that the information we've placed before them about who we are as an agency and what we can offer and what we stand for, you know, I, I believe it, you know, it's second to none. And at that point in time, you, you, know, you put it in God's hands and you just you, you hope for the best. And you hope that the young man will feel the same way. But you know, that's a good position that you know, we've been able to develop over the past couple of years to feel like we can compete with any agency out there for the best talent across the country. Uh, you've alluded to character, and character is important, but I'm curious, uh, ethical question. Mm -hmm. What if a Michael Vick prospect right. comes along and gets a hold of ETL Associates? 
What are, what are some of the things that go into play with regards to that possibility? You know, it's, it's very difficult to say. I mean, when you have a talented player like a, you know, like a Michael Vick, you know, with some, you know, some character issues, you know, experience over the past several years has shown me that, you know, there's a saying, you know, never put, never put passion before principle. Because even if you win, you lose. Mm -hmm. and, and part of it's self-preservation. As an agency, it's, it's always easier to deal with, you know, with players who are going to do the right thing, you know, mm -hmm. who are going to make the right choices. And there's less headache on both sides, less stress. And it allows you to, to allocate your time more positively for players that you do represent, you know, rather than you know, use the extra time you have to, to take care of matters off the field and mm -hmm. unnecessary issues that really you know, don't, don't create any productivity for anybody or any opportunities off the field for clients. So it, it's about energy and about allocating it in the most efficient manner possible, which I feel if we represent young, young men of character and we don't sway from that principle, then all of our energy can be devoted in a positive direction. So, yes, I mean, you know, you, you know that somebody out there is definitely going to represent a player of that, with that talent, mm. but it, it won't be us. So... Uh, are there particular conferences uh, that you focus on the most with regards to the prospects? Yeah, I, I typically, I'm from Ohio originally, Canton, Ohio, and I went to school at Notre Dame for undergrad and for law school. So obviously I go back to my alma mater, uh, to mm -hmm. Notre Dame, uh, the Ohio schools, proximity, you know, we have schools out in Pennsylvania, New York, Northeast, and I've been going down south recently, mm -hmm. Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, you know, hitting the southern schools as well. Florida. So, well, according to SI, the SEC is the toughest conference in, in D1. I would have to agree. <laughs> I would have to agree. I mean, if you look at the schedule and you look at, you know, Florida playing LSU one week, then Georgia, then you know Alabama, and then you know it's just it's ridiculous. You know the talent and the the competition down there. Are there uh, due to the draft? Are there certain positions in football that are the coveted positions with regards to the draft? I'm thinking. Defensive end, running back, is that? Quarterback, I mean, quarterback, I'd say, is the most coveted position. I mean, you know, you look every year, you know, you, if you have a, a top-flight quarterback, a franchise quarterback, you know, most likely that quarterback's going to go number one or in the top three or four or even five. And you look last year, you look at Stafford, Sanchez, mm -hmm. you know, you look at players of that caliber and how high they, did, they ended up going in the draft. I'd say a pass-rushing defensive end, somebody can get off the edge and sack the quarterback. There is always, there's always a premium put on players if, that can do that. Cover corners are another, another example of a, of a player who would go very high in the draft. You know, a cornerback who can shut down basically one side of the field and lock down a receiver. You know, teams pay a premium for that as well. So I'd say you know, those three positions, you, know, you really... And you also have to say a left tackle. Mm -hmm. you know, if you have a tackle, and there's a movie coming out blindside <laughs> about Michael Orr, if you have a tackle who can, who can protect the quarterback's blindside and just has the, you know, a tackle who has the feet, Mm -hmm. Quickness and agility to you know handle that side and you know pass protect that quarter you know that type of player that tackle will come at a premium as well. You mentioned that the fall is really the touring season mm -hmm. for a pro football agent. What happens in the winter or January or to up until the draft? W what is that activity? That's a busy time as well. You know during that period of time you will have our draft class signed. And, you know, you'll have these players that we sign will start their training for the combine. You know, training for the 40, the vertical, you know, the 20-yard shuttle, the three cone. They'll start their training. Some of the players will have invites to postseason all-star games, such as the Senior Bowl or the East-West Shrine game. So what we do is we make sure that, you know, the first thing we do is we coordinate training for our players, make sure that everything's set up for them in terms of their lodging, you know, transportation to and from, just make sure that everything is set up and they can get into a groove where the only thing they have to focus on is training for the combine. You know, there will be about an eight-day period if they do play in an all-star game where they have to fly, they'll have to fly down for that week of practice before the game. While they're down there, whether it be at the Senior Bowl in Mobile, mm 